welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I've got a little demonstration video for you about uh, preparing your felt for sewing. Now most of you may have worked out by now that felt is pretty much my favourite material to work with. It does need a little help along the way though. If you prepare your felt for sewing you're going to find that you, your end results are way cleaner and crisper and also it makes the sewing process a whole lot easier. Um, so I'm going to show you some tips and techniques and of course it's going to be suitable for all of my patterns. Also if you'd like to see some more of my behind the scenes work and, and uh, some of my other artwork because I'm also an illustrator you can follow me on Instagram um, and have a look and, and see all of the other things that I like to do. But for now let's get busy preparing our felt. So first of all today, let's talk about the different types of felt. Now you can purchase your felt online, you can, you can buy it from your local craft store. It's certainly a re very readily available uh, fabric to, to purchase and work with and you'll find that it comes in several different ways. Now this is your regular craft felt. Now this is a wool viscose blend. So it's, it's a great felt because it's it's got that lovely softness. It's actually quite a dense felt, so it holds together very well. It's not too fluffy. Um, the, the one that I have actually tends to be quite fine, so it's only about a millimetre thick. But I find this wool viscose felt is fantastic for using in applique. So for cutting out your little shapes and appliquing on to your projects. This one works really well and of course, I mean, look at the colours, that's just incredible. Then you have a washable acrylic felt and you probably find this one most readily available in all of your, your local craft outlets. Now this one is a little bit thicker, so it's, it's probably almost two millimetres and it's just washable acrylic. So it's got uh, some density to it, it's just, it's fuller, it's more plump. And I, this is the felt that I use for making many of my, my animals, such as my, my little bears. They're all made of this, this type of felt, um, which I have treated and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the acrylic felt that you can purchase very easily locally or online, that one has been really useful to me. And then of course you have the ultimate, which is pure wool felt. Now, pure wool, wool felt, it, it comes in, in quite a few different sort of types. Um, it depends on your manufacturer or, or, or your maker of your felt. This one that I get is, it's a lovely full bodied felt. And even though it's pure wool felt, it's not too soft. The only thing I find with pure wool felt is that they can be so soft that they don't hold themselves very well and they can be a bit tricky to cut out. So I like to get a nice fine edge when I'm cutting my felt pieces, um, but this one is particularly good. My pure wool felt, I use very, very moderately. It's not, I don't use pure wool, wool felt for making even my, um, my one of a kind creations, um, just because believe it or not, the acrylic felt is better suited. So there we go, that's your types of felt. And of course you can get felt, it then comes in metallics and it comes in prints and so on. So there's no end to um, the variety there. Now how we use it and how we prepare it for sewing, I never ever ever just use a piece of felt untreated for any of my projects. I never do that. The only way that I use felt is they have something added to them that makes them more agreeable to sewing, makes them stronger and gives me a better result. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do that. And if you've been watching some of my videos, you'll have seen that I, um, I have several different things that I do and I'm gonna show you here. So the first thing that I like to use, like to do is I make something which I call double felt. So double felt is simply two pieces of felt joined together, completely bonded with heat and bond, or what we call here in Australia, fusible webbing. So heat and bond is a brand name, and then you have, you know, Vlizafix over here. 
at the end of the day, you've got to try a few to see what you like the best. This is my heat and bond paper. And I buy, as you can see, on a great big roll in bulk because I use so much of it. Um, and this is a light to medium weight. So, so long as you're buying a light to medium weight uh, heat and bond, applique paper, fusible webbing paper, you're going to be all right. And you'll find your favorite. Um, I bought this one initially and I've never used another brand. So there you go. It's not difficult to find one that you like. So to make double felt, we actually take a piece, a piece of our, our heat and bond and we press it with a hot iron and always a protective cloth we press it to one side of our felt pieces. So then we just remove that backing paper and then we're just going to do the same thing and we're going to fuse that one into place with a hot iron and protective cloth to fully bond that, that those two pieces together. And of course we end up with what is a fantastic stable uh, fabric to work with that has more bulk, but it has all of the flexibility because it's got that, that sort of midsection there of that bonding glue that's in there, which is now set. It's a very clean edge. It's a great edge, which means we can leave it raw. Um, you can cut out shapes out of this one and leave the edges just raw and they will stay nice and neat and clean. So where would I use it? Well, I use my double felt in so many ways. Here on this little bear here, this is a little wool felt bear um, with an acrylic felt head. And that little collar there is made out of double felt. And you can see the best thing about double felt is, of course, you can use two different colors. And all I've done there is I've been able to treat the edges with a blanket stitch. So you don't have to sew two pieces together, turn it through and then do it. You can just use your double felt as a single piece of fabric. And you can see that it's got such fantastic hold, great properties because you can curl it, you can mold it. It's just fabulous. I would be absolutely uh, lost in my work if I, if I didn't use double felt here again, how I've used it here on this, on this little banana. Rather than sewing pieces together, we're using a single piece and we're able to just treat those edges with a little bit of, uh, you know, a few stitches and you've got this lovely, stable little piece of fabric. So that is double felt. You'll see me use that a lot in my patterns. So the next one that we do is I do something which you often see me refer to as felt fabric. Now felt fabric is very similar. So what it is, is a piece of fabric bonded in the same way to a piece of felt. And that gives us, again, it's a very, very stable, workable uh, fabric to use. For, it's great for bags. It's great for, um, again, for if you're going to be making something like, for example, where would I use uh, felt fabric? In the case of these little um, phone cases here, I've just bonded the, the red to the stripy fabric there. And then you've got this fabulous fabric that you just have to fold up. No seams are necessary. You can leave them there just with a top stitch. And you really don't, because there's glue involved there, that you don't have a lot of fraying. Certainly not for a project like this. And you can see that you know, there's no limit to sort of the colours that you can make up and, and the combinations there that you can use with your felt mixed with your fabric. So it's the same process. You apply your heat and bond to your fabric. Then we just remove that backing paper. And then again, with your hot iron and your protective cloth, you press that one into place. And then of course, you can use that one. You can cut any shapes out of that. I tend to treat my fabrics first, large enough to accommodate all my pattern pieces, and then I trace my pattern pieces out of that piece of fabric. So that is felt fabric. So when I refer to that in my patterns, you'll know what I'm talking about. Now the other way, the most common way that I treat my felt 
is that I just simply interface it. Though I don't interface my felt with a, what would I call it, a man-made fibre uh, interfacing, the ones that are sort of formed. Um, what I use for felt, because felt is such a breathing, movable, flexible um, fabric, I use a woven fusible interfacing. So you can see that that's a woven interfacing and it's got the little glue on the other side and it's just a matter of using the same technique, hot iron, always a protective cloth because if you're using acrylic felt, you don't want too much heat directly on that felt. It'll just, it'll just burn. So hot iron, protective cloth, and we just press that one on just as I have here and you get that again you've got a beautiful stable it's not unlike felt fabric um, beautiful stable fabric you cut your shapes out of there you've got a good clean edge and it just gives that felt some stability but because it's a woven fabric it still has all that movement and flexibility so your seams will stay nice and rounded so I use this the technique, I interface my felt for all of my work in my bears, my animals, where I'm fully constructing little heads, arms, legs and so on. So that's the one probably that I use the most and find that to be the most useful. And the other thing that we do, that I do with my felt, when I said that I never ever use felt just as it is, when I'm cutting out little shapes, for example, like on this little cupcake here, all of those little pieces, they all have been cut from a piece of felt that has our fusible webbing heat and bond applied to the back. Not using it to apply it to anything, which certainly you can, I'm just using it to strengthen and bond the back. Not only that, if you've ever tried to trace a, a shape or a little piece, onto a piece of felt, you find that it's, it's not a clean line. It's much harder to keep a clean line and cut a clean line, especially when you're doing little fussy cutting like this sort of thing. But if you have that same shape and you have that paper backing on the back, of course you've got a lovely clean line and your scissors can cut that one out absolutely sharp and pristine. Not only that, once you peel that little backing paper off, that little piece will stay crisp. Those edges will stay crisp for, for the life of the project. So that's why I use that. And of course, we do use just the heat and bond on the back of the felt to cut out a shape and to actually apply it to a, a project, which is its usual use. That's usually what heat and bond is for. It doesn't matter, it doesn't mean that we can't break the rules sometimes. <laughs> So um, from there, the other thing that I will say about working with felt, it's obviously my favourite fabric. Um, I would be absolutely lost without it. Um, the key thing that I'll say with working for, with felt and, and preparing your felt in these ways, any time that you apply a, whether it's a heat and bond paper and interfacing or joining two together, as we do, as we're going to join those two, once we press those together and we've got our hot iron and we've got our protective cloth, it's so very important that you let that piece cool before you move it. So when you heat up any of these um, products, of course, the idea is that the, glue, the glue that's on the back of uh, this, this little heat and bond that glue is going to melt, it's going to get warm and it's going to get very soft and that's what makes it stick to our project. So if we pick it up and move it right away while it's still warm, it will lift. It will lift, it will buckle, it won't be adhered as, as you like. So anything that you press, whether it's just applying interfacing to your, to your felt, you press it on. I even leave my cloth on it and I just let it cool on the ironing board and it's only for about one minute. But then you take off your cloth and this is 
the glue that's on the back has cooled and so then it's now fully sealed. So those are my tips. I certainly hope they help you. They will definitely help you with making my patterns. Um, you'll now recognise that all of those, all of those tips are, are part of uh, my work and, and the little patterns that I offer you. So I hope it's going to be useful to you all moving forward. Well, thank you for watching today. I hope that this little video has helped you out. It's certainly, I certainly have you all well equipped to uh, make up all of my new patterns that are coming your way and there are a lot coming. Um, I've got plenty on the design drawing board for you. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those. In the meantime, everybody, make sure that if something good comes your way, just pay it forward because we all can. And until next time, it's Huru from me.